Please stand. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening. Let your light scatter the darkness. And Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
Lord, from the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is worthy of all praise. Let our prayers come before you as incense, and may the lifting up of our hands be an evening sacrifice of praise acceptable to you.
O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and sin gets its power from the law. But thanks be to God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's one of my earliest memories as a child. My mother would dress my younger brother and me and take us on walks through the neighborhood, uh, her morning routine. Uh, but then after, at a certain point, she started to add a little detour into those walks. Uh, we'd uh, scurry into our parish church and you know, cut a step, step down the steps to the lower church uh, and click clack down to the statue of the Sacred Heart. And she would reach into her pocketbook and pull out a chapel veil. And we'd kneel in front of the Sacred Heart and she'd put quarters into the change box. And she'd light three candles and one for each of us. And she'd say, now say a prayer for your grandfather. I was probably four or maybe four and a half at the time and my grandfather died. Uh, when I was about three and a half. So this was about a year after his death. And I have very scant memories of my grandfather. Um, he, he and my grandmother came to the United States from Ireland. They were immigrants. And they came in 1930, the beginning of the Depression. Not a great time to be uprooting your life and coming to a new country. And they left a, 
a failing farm in the west of Ireland and moved into crowded apartments in Boston. And my grandfather worked day jobs. He'd work construction. He'd, he'd, he'd do odd jobs and repairs. He'd, he'd uh, uh, drive a truck for a while. Um, and <clears throat> kind of scraped by. He was a natural born storyteller, was wonderful with children, and was a ferocious drinker. And he died um, in 1965, the year before we started smuggling ourselves into the parish church and saying prayers for him. It was only years later that my mother told me that she had had some dreams where her father would appear to her and give her $5 bills and say, now nah, Madge, Madge, have some masses said for me. And she'd wake up and the $5 bills were gone, they weren't there, but the, the impulse to, to pray for him uh, at, so soon after his death stayed with her. And so that's when she started to have masses said and would bring the two of us boys, my sisters were in school, um, to the church to light candles and to pray. I remember at the time, uh, feeling a certain closeness to him when we would be kneeling in that church and praying, it was like the, the, the absence had collapsed. The, the, the gap um, between death and life had kind of uh, uh, gotten smaller. And, and I could feel a certain sense of his presence and the few memories that I had of him. There were very holy times for me as a, as a child one that I continue to imagine and pray about. This feast that we celebrate uh, today, the, the commemoration of the departed, or All Souls Day, or Dia de los Muertos, is a very old tradition in our church. It's not as old as All Saints Day, which began by the veneration of the martyrs, by the ones who knew them before they were killed, or the next generation, the ones who would gather around their graves, their tombs, especially uh, outside of Rome in the catacombs and pray and celebrate mass all the time, not just on one particular day. But the veneration of the saints, of the martyrs, quickly uh, included prayers for those who had died, <clears throat> prayers for those who had lived the Christian life. They didn't have the, 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 the gift of martyrdom their lives might not have been very, might not have been a, a extraordinary, but they lived the Christian life with fidelity, and Christians would pray for them, that they would make their way into uh, the halls of heaven. Um, it this feast became associated with November, uh, thanks to the evangelization of the Irish. Uh, the first. Uh, day of November is the beginning of a month called Samhain, and it's the time when all the harvesting is done, all the work of the summer is done, the, 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 the animals have been brought into barns, the crops have been stored away, and the darkness of winter descends. And because of this, it was, a, it was like a hinge seasonal time for the Irish. <clears throat> uh, and so it was a shift from a time of, of fertility and, and of, of, of food production and, and uh, long, long uh, daylight filled evenings into uh, the darkness of winter. And because of this kind of time of the beginning of the winter, the beginning of Samhain, um, that the Irish saw it as, as a time when the walls between um, the material world and the spiritual world thinned, and there was potential, at least, for, uh, for, for things to happen between those two worlds. Um, when, when the Irish were converted to Christianity, uh, the, 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 the evangelists were smart enough to say, oh, we can make use of this kind of cultural and, and social belief and moved the, the celebration of All Saints from when it was in the spring to, uh, to November 1st. And, you know, the, this idea of, the, of, of our lives having these times of transition, where we undergo transition, of our lives entering into a period where the kind of 
borders that we usually live with suddenly begin to thin out and dissipate um, is part of this experience that we have of commemorating uh, those who have died. It's a liminal experience, an experience of liminality, as sociologists call it. Uh, liminality or liminal experiences come from the Latin word limina, which means threshold. Often people translate it as doorway, and it is a doorway, but it's literally that, that little couple inch thick piece of wood or, or stone between the outside and the inside of one's house. Not the door itself, but that little thing that's put there to keep the outside junk from blowing in and the inside junk from blowing out. The thresh, you know, a hold. The thing that keeps the chaff, the, 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 the dry leaves, the, the, the inner flooring from mixing. Um, and, and the idea of, of, of the limina is that it's neither inside the house nor outside the house, it's in between. And that's what these experiences of liminality are for us as human beings. We go through these periods of transition in our lives where we, 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 we are leaving behind kind of one part of our life and we're taking on something new and we're neither who we were fully or where we're becoming or where we're headed. And, and these liminal experiences are often associated with kind of those major rites of passage. First communion, confirmation, going off to college, getting our first job, marrying the person we love. Those moments of liminality when we are neither inside nor outside of our comfort zone, where we are betwixt and between the, the way in which we identify ourselves, where the things that used to be uh, so easy and come with such predictability are being exchanged for new challenges, new opportunities. Liminality is a time of trial and often whether it's you know, the bishop asking you questions on the day of your confirmation from the catechism, whether it's a trial like that or a trial of learning to sit still and kneel uh, in church in preparation for First Communion, learning of new behaviors that can be difficult for us because they're new. Um, but it's both not only trial, but it's also incredible creativity, incredible opportunities of thinking things anew of experiencing God anew. It's a time in which we're no longer as secure in ourselves, but we, we, we create incredibly strong bonds with other people who are undergoing the same type of, of transition. And, and it's a time of, of, of experimentation, of trying new things and not allowing just our habits to dictate how we live. And so this period that we're in, in the liturgical season of November is a time when we feel very close with those who have died, who have gone before us, because we, we are compassionate and we, 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 we offer our own gifts to them um, as they undergo the greatest transition of all of entry into the kingdom of heaven. When the Catholics went to Mexico, they discovered that the indigenous population said something very similar, uh, Dia de los Muertos, uh, a time when you feel close with those loved ones who have passed on, and they moved it to the All Souls and All Saints days uh, that had been the, the kind of way of, of adapting Christianity to the Irish, now it was adapted to people, Mexicans especially, but throughout Central America. This experience of liminality uh, is a great way, I think, for us to understand the, 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 the teaching on purgatory that is so much a part of All Souls Day. You know, we're praying along with those who have died to help them on their journey, because the journey is not one and done 
right? It's not immediate. Uh, they're at the threshold of, of the heavenly halls of the, where the saints gather and sing as we saw and heard yesterday. It's when the scars that human life inflicts upon us are softened and healed. It's when the husks of our bad decisions, of our bad behavior, of our sins are swept away. It's where the, the kind of stoniness of our hearts uh, gets chipped away bit by bit by the love and mercy of God. It's not a time of torment, I don't think. It's a time of transition. And in a way, uh, we can help those folks who are undergoing this experience of God's mercy that is both healing but also difficult uh, to, to accept uh, the love and mercy that God has for them in spite of disappointments that they had in life. In a way, I feel a special closeness to uh, this celebration of All Souls Day this year because this whole year has been a time of trying liminality with the pandemic. You know, in a way, we've all, as a global population, moved into a time of trial where our old lives have really been changed and where, where the new life that is coming hasn't quite been revealed. And so this night, especially while we're experiencing our distance from family members and friends as we experience the disruptions of the pandemic on our lives, I think we have a, an especially open heart to, to share our prayers, to share our experiences with those who have died and who are being transitioned by the love of God from the limitations of our human life to the fullness of life in the banquet halls of heaven. And so let us continue to pray with these lovely people that are along the altar rail and in our altars at home and in our uh, most cherished memories. Uh, and, and remember that those who have achieved sanctity that we celebrated yesterday are especially uh, prayerful for us in this time of, of difficulty. May we invoke not only the saints uh, to our aid, but bring our own compassion and love for the people around us.
We acknowledge Christ the Lord, through whom we hope that our lowly bodies will be made like his in glory, and we say, Lord, you are our life and resurrection. Christ, Son of the living God, who raised up Lazarus, your friend, from the dead, raise up to life and glory the dead, whom you have redeemed by your precious blood. Christ, consoler of those who mourn, you dry the tears of the family of Lazarus, of the widow's son, and the daughter of Jairus. Comfort those who mourn for the dead. Christ, Savior, destroy the reign of death in our earthly bodies, so that just as through sin we deserved punishment, so through you we may gain eternal life. Christ, Redeemer, look on those who have no hope because they do not know you. May they receive faith in the resurrection and in the life of the world to come. You revealed yourself to the blind man who begged for the light of his eyes. Show your face to the dead who are still deprived of your life. Let those who rest in the peace of Christ one day join in the celestial banquet with the whole company of saints. May we too enjoy life eternal in the presence of all who love you, O God. The shepherds of your church, keep your flock from being snatched out of your hand. Through them you give your flock eternal life. Save those who have died, those for whom you gave up your life. Our Father, who art in Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord, and as our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, so may our hope of resurrection for your departed servants also find new strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.